Hello, everyone, and welcome back to round number seven. Another undefeated match on table one for you. We are bringing back Kiet because we loved him so much and his impeccable play with his uh, low cost <laughs> Katakuri deck. Uh, and we're bringing on a, a newcomer, Elliot Charters, here with Zorro. And it's going to be interesting to see how this one plays out. Um, Dale, I think we saw Zorro in some of the earlier rounds. Yep. Um, obviously, we had Kiet on the previous matchup as well. Um, but a lot more aggression, I would imagine, coming in from Zorro. And yeah. I think that really... I mean, correct me if I'm wrong here, but that would start to put a lot more pressure onto Katakuri players. Is that right? Yeah. So, as I said, I believe in the last couple of rounds... One of the best ways to deal with Katakuri is to get it down to one life or zero life before it has a chance to play Tangra Big Mum, right? Mm -hmm. Now, Zoro is probably one of the best decks to be positioned to do that because you've got access to a lot of low cost cantrips that can become attackers like Ezo, Buggy, then Marketo buffs everything. The Dun is a decent attacker. So you've got all this really low value engine that can like put in small amounts of pressure really quickly and then on top of that you can finish up the game like the turn before if you go first the turn mm. before uh big mum hits a field you can play 10 drop or uh, nine drop whitebeard and you've got such a like he alone basically removes a life <laughs> what yeah. uh, big mum puts out so then you're not letting them ever really have a chance to recover but that is under the assumption that the Zoro play does hit all these weenie rushes yeah. and all these other things yeah. if he whiffs that and ends up playing more of a mid-range deck mm. or game with like um, Marcos and if yeah. he's running Atmos, like the 4K Vanillas, mm -hmm. it can be a lot worse. Yeah. But at yeah. the same time, mm. you know, we've seen two Teach versions of Zoro out on yeah. the field, which was yep. kind of a nice pressure, but... Not really what we're accustomed to with, and probably not going to be as... Yeah, uh, as powerful in this matchup as it normally would. But both players have obviously made it this far. Both players are six zero, so there is a reason why they're here. Yep. Um, and we've got to give obviously Elliot the benefit of the doubt, and let's just see how he's built his Zoro deck. Because obviously, with these generic well, leaders that kind of, uh, you know, give one k to all your he, characters and stuff like that, there's many many ways to to build. He has become so prepared by bringing a glass tray that you can just put his hand in. We're playing Scrabble now. Oh, it looks like it. <laughs> Can't see any of the cards. It's perfect. I love it. I don't know if it's legal or not, but I love it. Surely it's fine. Um, it is also a finalist mat he is playing on. He's been around. So that is something to keep track. Yep. Could mean nothing. I mean, Kit yeah. does have the the base model Katakuri. Um, so it is possible that it means absolutely zero, but we're going to get into yeah. it anyway. And we're going to find out now what actually is going to happen. And it looks like Elliot is going to go first. I'm not sure who won or who lost the dice roll, but opting to go first here, getting the Ezo searcher on turn one, yep. being able to look at top five and grab something through going to be good for him. And then obviously on Kiet side, we are, we going to see the Sanji, When he drops down his two Don. And adding five cost Marco. So five drop Marco is, I, I do like it in this matchup. Mm -hmm. I know I said it's a bit slow for the deck, but if uh, Ken plays a Sanji, too, but if he did play Sanji, turn three, you just sort of let it slide, slide. And then in your turn three, you also just Marco it. So like, <laughs> I'll turn two, you let it slide, turn three, you mark it. And it's just a nice uh, answer to it. Yeah. Now, we're starting off with the pudding. Yeah. If you get open double pudding, it's kind of insane. Adds a brulee. Brulee. Press the um, bottom. And we'll see if he taps the next one as well, because if he does, then Telltale sign that he's got another one, obviously. Oh! Uh, he Joyce. sure did. Wow, we 
if there's anything you want to open to deal with Zoro's aggression, it's double pudding. Oh, oh I thought he missed, and I was like, look, that, that that's a bit more of a an understand, but he... How do you whiff on a pudding, though? Like, I don't uh, think you know, actually can. But, um, yeah, manages to grab... I think that was a 10-cost big mum, right? It was, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so... Really nice start by Kiet, managing to find a few pieces to help him out later um, and giving him the... Would you say that's more ideal on turn one for Kiet than it would be to play a Sanji? I think so, because uh, now he can't just swing Ezo and like yeah. easily get out of it. Like <laughs> Yeah. Because Sanji sort of locked Kiet's turn two down into just Sanji pass, right? Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. He can put two Don on and swing, and then that's it. Whereas playing double pudding means, hey, look, I can swing either at face mm. with a 5k if you don't swing with Ezo, or I can just, you know, relax and yeah. start building up board control. But... I mean, look at Elliot. We're talking about board control here, and on turn two, he's able to play his second Ezo and then also a buggy on top. Didn't yep. opt to put a 1k onto his leader, which is very interesting, going for the 6k swing. Left it at 5, and actually whiffs on the buggy. Probably means he's got another low-cost unit. Or, or not. Okay. Um, <laughs> Maybe hoping that he found something off the buggy to be able to... Buggy such as Vance, though, so I don't think he oh, could have. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Doesn't really um, make sense. Okay. Another thing Zara players have been doing is they don't necessarily always swing straight off the bat. Yeah. Because then they just get swung out and lose, right? So another thing that Elliot might be trying to do is build up a board, let that board then receive all the Don and have one big push turn mm. prior to 10-drop Big Mum hitting, and then you could try and play around like that. Personally, I've never tried playing like this, like, but this is why I'm not 6 and no, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's exactly it, right? These players are here for a reason, and we're going to find out why they're here, so... Yep. Looking very interesting now. Elliot's kind of splashed the board, but not really anything that you're really accustomed to putting one dot under your leader and being able to kind of attach others onto these bodies and then swing with. They're really just trying to, I guess, find his own pieces. Yeah. And I, I don't even find... know if he... Mm. I feel like he doesn't even need to swing with a pudding, though, this turn, because, like, Zoro is definitely going to be the aggressor this game. Correct. You just sort of want to kill that board. So, yeah. like, if you just yeah. swing once a turn with 7k and establish a board of your own... No, absolutely. So, that's what I That's what I mean. I mean, with Elliot yeah. playing these two Ezos and Buggy, you don't normally see these really go in for, like, extra damage. Um, but... Yeah. It just depends. Again, everyone's got a different play style, of course, that we're going to find out how Elliot decides to play this through. Um, oh, he's actually White revealing his opponent. Oh, uh, no, no, this oh, is he's life. he's revealing right? the effect. I was going to say. Yeah. Um, yeah, wow, hitting the Whitebeard Pirates off the top. So that's going to be four searches. Yeah, already. In the space of two turns. I mean, he did whiff on the buggy, but imagine he hits the buggy there as well, and he's just been able yeah. to replenish his hand throughout the whole time, finds a Marco. This is insane. Shattered he didn't tap out as well with another search. Just casual five searches by yeah, turn two. Yeah. Oh, this is insane uh, start for Elliot. Like, if he if he was able to find the event from the buggy, yeah. even even more crazy, but... Rule a blocker coming down, that's always going to be... I don't know if I like that. Because mm. we know there's a five-drop Marco in hand, right? He can right. just slam that. Get rid of it. And I think he's, that's what he's going to exactly do. Yeah. He just saw it. I mean, and then five then, face. If, you've, if you've got nothing to play, maybe just leave those Don up, feeling like that if, you know, Elliot doesn't have any better plays than dropping down the five cost marker yeah. anyway, then it's kind of wasted or forcing him to like keep it in hand and not utilize his five Don. Yep. Oh, he was able to actually hit a trigger off that, and he's going to get rid of the Marco in return. I'll rest it. Now, this is insane, because Marco now triggers again to KO a 3 cost a 3,000 power or less. Yeah. Because it's on play during your turn. Oh. So, if he'd used Thunderbolt during his turn, that Marco would have done nothing. But because he chose to add it to hand, that Marco got another kill. Mm -hmm. Which might not sound like much, but now, next turn, he could potentially swing with the Ezos without having fear of getting absolutely destroyed on the clapback. 
because there's one less body on uh, Kiet's field. Yep. It looked like a, a couple of misses for Elliot has really turned into something extraordinary now, having all these multiple weenies on the board and being able to start putting the pressure on when he wants. And Kiet looks at his top life, thinks to himself, I'm going to keep that there instead um, and not put that at the bottom. Yep. Again, another sign that your opponent is going to be able is is happy to to take that he did actually 2k jozu into that swing so where was that at uh it was at the marco ah so one of the ways you can try and deal with zara's hand size is just swinging the marcos because yeah. they will burn through their hand quickly if you swing four like six k's into it yep Yeah, so it looks like Elliot's got about three to four cards in hand, but he's got a nice board. So it looked like he had a bit more, but he has started comboing out and getting that bring yeah. the Marco back, and then obviously uh, being able to combo out of that one now. And Kiet looks like he's going to tap six. Oh, just chuck it five oh, on oh, pudding and swing pudding and try to put some more onto Marco. Sorry, there is one under his leader already, so he's going to put the rest yeah. under the Marco and just discard a radical beam to bring it back. Yeah, wow. But that's still hand advantage that is going the way yep. of Kiet now. Like you said, you're probably not too upset about this, but on the return now, Elliot is able to possibly start putting on some pressure, which, yeah, puts one straight on the lead, knowing that he's got that. He's going to swing into the pudding, yeah, as you do. Yep. And now... He's uh, been waiting all game to do something, and here yeah. they are. I mean, and now Kiet is just looking at an empty board, no Don available. And Elliot choosing to swing with the Marco. Might as well. It's not a blocker or anything. It's just a 7k bead stick at this point. So 7k is really tough for Dex to deal with, as we know. Um, we know Kiet has a dead card in hand of 10 cost Big Mum. Probably another as well. Uh, plays a smoothie. Discarding Nikoku, which is not bad. Swing 7k again. So Kiet's at 5 cards in hand. He'll go down to 2 life most likely this turn. And then, like, if he wants to sort of maintain any kind of tempo he's probably gonna have to slam that katakuri put marco in life mm -hmm. but then the zara player is still laughing because kids are two going into his nine don turn which means <laughs> oh did he hit another trigger yeah he did look at it i think at the very beginning okay and then decide to keep it there so he knew that this was coming unless he took one prior to that which i he... didn't see but i think he because he just he played smoothie the off a trigger and then oh, this is wow, another no, one this is another one then yeah so he's hit Thunderbolt, Smoothie, and now third trigger. I mean, the deck is like, what, 15 or so Yeah, like triggers? So chances of hitting some in your life are quite quite decent. I wouldn't say it's very high, but it is quite a decent hit rate. But what trigger is it here that he's thinking about playing now? It's got to be like Cracker, I reckon, or another Smoothie. It's just he's debating on does he actually want to lose that card from hand after. Yeah, you. and he's still got a, quite a big hand size here, so I'd... Losing one card from hand doesn't really seem like it's going to put him in a terrible position. I don't know. I think... Oh, oh Paris, Paris. Yeah. Discarding Katakuri. Wow. Okay, so he's got three live cards in hand, so a swing 7k again, and then if he goes down to two cards in hand... Yep. So we know one's a big mum. So if he just plays... To darn perfect. I think I think Elliot's in a really good spot. Oh yeah, absolutely. Manages to find the buggy. Because it's like yeah, Kiet can't even um Big Mum to heal up now, right? He can maybe go to the seven cost Big Mum. Mm. And if that happens, I think Elliot just takes that life every day of the week to stop Kiet from healing. Mm. And then he can just put on a bunch of pressure. He's still one turn away from being able to play that ten cost, so you're absolutely right. Mm. 
and that Marco is just going to be super annoying and sticky because like you need to swing six, seven k into it, and then he can either just canter out or discard an event to bring it back. So like, well, Prospero now gets the double the double hit, right? Uh this is um the searcher ah, when it dies, the searcher. not cracker. So this one is just Sorry. a five k bead stick. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Which makes it a bit interesting that it was played, but like I sort of understand why. Looks like he's swinging eight K, probably at marker. No events in hand to bring it back. That's rough. Mm. Well, he couldn't. He did miss on the buggy too, so wasn't yeah. really. He'd have to naturally draw them, right? Yeah. Yep. Just trying to clean the board up as much as possible, but. Even then, it's still potentially um, going to be difficult for Kiet to survive this next turn. So, so going into Zara's turn with Nine Don, I think Whitebeard might not be the correct play here, but you know. Yeah, and it looks like Elliot's a green here, so he's going to start loading Don out, swinging, and hoping to just try and get one more life out before it goes to Big Mo's turn. Oh, Shirohoshi in life. Too good. He has hit so many great triggers from life. Discarding oh, two Big Mums. Wow. Well, he's got the one, right? But interesting that he didn't want to keep a second one just to go back to back. Discards out, and one card in hand. You're laughing because you know it's going to be um, either a one or two K counter. Like mm. probably a one K counter if anything, uh, just because he's discarded three. Then so you're looking kind of smooth if you're Elliot still. Akiet is on one life, right? If I'm not mistaken. Yep. So he could just don up Ezo. Oh, wow. Buggy into the guard point. Yep. Not at risk of losing. Buggy's in active mode, so Kiet needs to hit that yep. blocker, or else he just loses. And if he 10 drop big lumps, I think he just auto loses. Like, yeah. You can't 10 uh, drop here. Nah. Doesn't do enough to warrant doing so. Like, yeah, you can crit your opponent's life, bring yourself up one again, but when you're looking at your opponent's board, with you, which is Izo, Dadan, Buggy, Leader will give yep. everything an extra 1k, and he takes the last life too. Yeah, so two cards in hand, it's... Oh, I don't man. know. What do you so, do? Yeah, what do you yeah. do here? Like, Yet has to swing into board to have any chance of living. Um, have, like, some way to heal as well, so Katakuri, I think, to put Shirohoshi back in life. Mm. And even then, he's still in a really bad spot, Absolutely. just because... Ali's got two cards in hand, or two attackers next turn, regardless. Potentially even three if he's got um, Rush Zoro. I know that card doesn't see too much play right now, but it's still a good card, so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so as we said, swing into the board, try and clean it up. Swing life, take, I think 10 drop big mum's coming. Yeah, he heals one, well, but he's got two cards in hand, so. Far out. If he plays this <sighs> smart, you just swing, like. 15k a lead, right? Nah, because he's got two life, remember? Oh, one life. One life, sorry, yeah, you're right. So, you sort of want to swing maybe, like, 8k. Yeah. And then you can still get out of the AK if the two cards in hand are two Ks, but yeah. if that's the case, then it is what it is, I guess. Yeah, this is definitely the way to do it. He's going eight. If that's this is it. Thunderbolt, though, nope. 
And then, then the just, rest goes on to buggy, right? Yeah. Three cards in hand. Unless he's got Chance a of them. Throw, which is even... Which, yeah. Uh, Marcano? Oh, Magra. Magra gave, wow. gives 3k. So, Bug is 7k before he's got 5 Don left to wow. attach. Or 6 Don. Jeez. Yeah, that's game. Yep. So yeah, uh, like, that did sort of go how I predicted. Mm -hmm. uh, it was Zoro outpacing the category player quite significantly. Yeah. And, as you saw, Kiet had three big bombs in hand. In any other matchup, that just guarantees a win. But in Zoro, it's like, oh no, I wish I had 2k counters instead. Like, Yeah. Just outpacing, right? Like, didn't allow him to set up. And that's obviously the downside of Katakuri. It's when you come up against any sort of aggression, it makes it super, super hard to deal with because yep. you're just kind of playing the quick game. Um, but guys, that's it for round number seven. We are going to take Jeez, it away from quick that. quick one. <laughs> Um, just so these guys can get their deck profiles, well, sorry, their decks put out for the judges so they can go through it. But stay tuned. We'll be back with round number eight in probably about 20 to 30 minutes. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll catch you guys then.